So the government decided to bypass Parliament and use an order in council to impose firearm legislation. How can they do that? I'll answer that question and more in a moment. As you've heard, the Liberals used an order in council to impose firearm legislation on law-abiding Canadians. Now there's two big issues here. Number one, does banning certain firearms make a difference? And number two, how can the government use an order in council to implement these new rules? First, on the question of a firearms ban, Vancouver Police Chief Adam Palmer said the existing firearm laws in Canada are already very strict. The problem is organized crime and the illegal importation of firearms. Do we need to protect Canadians? Of course we do. Does adding more regulations to law-abiding citizens make people safer? I don't think so. Adding a new law is very easy, but it doesn't solve the real problem. Solving the problem is much harder, but it is the right thing to do. More on that later. Now, what exactly is an order in council? The government has the power to make appointments and regulations using orders in council. It is rarely used for a significant impact on the day-to-day -day lives of Canadians. So an example, appointing people to an airport authority. The government recently appointed a new uh, governor to the Bank of Canada. That's an order in council. On March 24th, the government used an order in council to implement the Quarantine Act. Now, obviously that was an emergency, something that had to be done very quickly and they did not have time to run it through Parliament because of the COVID-19 virus. That makes perfect sense. But generally anything that will impact Canadians is done through parliamentary legislation. This order in council to ban assault style firearms goes far beyond what is typically done and directly impacts the liberty and the day-to-day -day lives of Canadians. So why did they do this? Maybe it was public opinion. You know, once you get outside the Toronto area, Canadians are very divided on banning firearms. In fact, in Saskatoon, only 30% of people support a ban on firearms. Trying to create legislation through polling is a bad idea. Maybe they were scared to face Parliament. They would have to face debates. They would go to committee. Uh, we would bring witnesses to that committee to talk about the, the pros and cons, and we would get to the bottom of the evidence on how this legislation can actually work. The government wants to use evidence-based approaches. We'd like to see the evidence on this, on this legislation. Maybe they're preparing for an election. I think there's a good chance that the Liberals will call an election this fall. Gun legislation checks a box on their campaign promises. Now back to the firearm ban. Banning certain firearms is very arbitrary and it's causing great confusion among firearms owners. Now remember, military assault weapons are already banned in Canada. You're not allowed to have them here. Military style, it's a political term. It has no legal definition and that's causing a lot of confusion as well. So what's a better solution? We need to eliminate the smuggling of firearms across our border and we've proposed a task force to address this very issue. We've also proposed mandatory sentences for sentences for smuggling. If we can eliminate the smuggling of firearms across our borders, that would target a very large number of the violent crimes that we see. We also would like to put better laws in place for our police forces to go after gang leaders and gang crime because we know that much of the violence in our cities comes from the gang world. We also need better supports for addiction and mental health problems. If we can stop problems before they become violent, that will go a great way to reducing the amount of violence that we see in our cities. My colleague Bob Soroya from Ontario has proposed a private member's bill that addresses many of these issues. Solving these problems isn't as simple as banning something. That's why we need to do the hard work of solving the real problem instead of trying to ban something that criminals aren't going to follow anyway. Thanks for listening, and as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact my office.